Well, that brings us to our speaker, Spark. And this morning's speaker, Spark, had his second consciousness expansion experience in 2007 after approximately nine years of meditation practice. This expansion ultimately led to his ability to perceive and interpret the superphysical structures and organization that define the human energy field. Though some of what he sees has been verified by the likes of Carolyn Meese and Barbara Brennan, to name a few, the bottom line is that he sees much that others do not. He is in uncharted territory with his understanding of the human energy field and his ability to communicate this understanding to others. What struck me, Marlene, while you were speaking is that you were talking about the human energy field and the light that us humans enjoy as our soul and how that ties into uh, what I'm hoping or thinking Christopher Christo will be talking about. He has documented years of his study of this field and has charted it out. He has a private practice as an esoteric psychologist where he puts his unique ability to see an individual's energy field to work to help that person facilitate their own healing. His goal is to communicate to humanity what he has learned about our underlying unity and singular orientation, thereby ultimately transforming human consciousness. Today, he will lead us through a brief introspection meditation titled Listening to God to help generate clarity for us regarding our current listening relationship to the infinite. I have personally used his services with outstanding results. And so now I ask that you fasten your seatbelts and give a warm circle welcome to our friend, Christo Bowers. Christo, take it away. There we go. Can you hear me now? Good. Thank you for the, the lovely introduction and thank you for the invitation to talk here, actually. It's, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, I th actually I think about circle quite quite often. Because, you know, after the couple times that I've been there, we would go over to New Britain and have lunch together. And so it's just, you know, I think of you, Circle of Miracle as my family. Uh, you know, my, my talk this morning, uh, periodically in my library, I'll stumble across the book, How to Listen to God by uh, a fellow by the name of Stanley. I don't know if anybody here has read that book, How to Listen to God. Uh, <clears throat> and I, I have not read the whole book all the way through, but every time I've opened it, I found some new inspiration on, on a new way of listening to or connecting with God that I just think is phenomenal. And so I wanted to talk about that today because I think that all of us are really attempting to develop a, a, a better listening relationship to God. And so I, I, this morning, in fact, I was meditating on the different types of ways of coming into contact with God and or at least being able to know God. And one of the things that I was looking at was, uh, you know, our physical senses. You know, we have these physical senses that we use to investigate the world around us. Uh, like listening to, I can't remember her first name, but she was reading that wonderful piece this morning, you know, reading on the human, you know, on the, the light of God and our creative ability. And that's you know using our hearing to investigate the world around us and then somebody else was also playing music this morning and it was just really beautiful to listen to and so you know we can also investigate the world around us through the our ability to see it so we investigate physically all the time and so our our energy body has basically the same capacities of our physical body but rather than looking around into the world of phys the physical world, we actually get to look around in the world or listen to the world around us that would be considered the super physical world or the world, the heavenly world, the celestial world, the world that exists around us, but just outside of our physical senses. 
you know, it's to me, it's incredible how that world will sometimes come through. And this morning I was sitting in meditation and I was reading about the experience of Moses when the when the angels when he saw the angel in the burning bush and how the angel spoke to him. Uh, then I was thinking and I was meditating on Joan of Arc and how she heard the voices of the saints that she was in communion with. And in each of these instances, you know, Moses had his what I'm gonna call a visual relationship with God that also included some instruction as well. And then Joan of Arc and her relationship with God was primarily based through her hearing. And so what, what I find, find interesting and available to each of us is that we can begin to use our, the senses that we have developed to begin to investigate or build a relationship with God. So that means, you know, I know that each of us have different capacities that have been developed already. Uh, I don't know, since everybody is on mute, they can't really answer, although I don't know if they can text it in. You know, I, I do believe that we've reached a stage of human evolution where some of us are actually receiving visions and some of us are actually able to hear the voice of God. And some of us come into these other forms of knowing that are neither seeing nor hearing, but represent another form of contact, which we generally call clear cognizance. We just know. So there's clear cognizance, this intimate form of knowing through contact with God. There's clear audience, which is what Joan of Arc exhibited. There's the hearing God or hearing the angels or the, the disembodied saints speak to her. And then there's people like Moses, you know, receiving, actually seeing the angel standing there. And in one of the other biblical passages, I think it's Hebrew something, where it says that he's given instructions on how to build the menorah according to the pattern that was shown to you, shown to him. So there we have the visual contact with God, or at least the, that whole field of, of matter. So I think for each and every one of us, there's a special way of developing that a, a more refined contact with God. And that means either sitting down and listening to God or sitting down and actually visually investigating the world of God or simply coming into contact with God through meditation and having God speak to us through our own knowing or understanding, which I sincerely believe that most of you are already doing in some capacity. It's a matter of of doing it, I think, more frequently for all of us who are look, who are seeking to build that contact. You know, for, for me, even, uh, I have been meditating since roughly 1998, maybe 1996. And even though I do see the human energy field, and even though in my own way I hear God speaking to me, I do seek to have, to, to develop a better form of communication, a more consistent form of communication, a more consistent uh, hearing or knowing or receiving. So for me, and I think it's for all of us as well, it's really important to continue to focus on building that relationship. And, and that's why I think understanding how we receive information from source, from God, whether it's visual, auditory or knowing is incredibly important for us because it represents the primary form of contact or the means of contact that we have with God. Now, in most of my work with other people in my talks, I like them to be interactive. And I'm wondering if anybody has any questions for me based upon the information that I've shared this morning. You know, I know that some of you have actually worked with me. I know some of you have seen me work with other people, and you know that I'm primarily clairvoyant, that I, I see that into that world of, that superphysical world, that world of energy. You know, I am not primarily clairaudient. Not like, not like Joan of Arc. That's, that's not my primary means of contact with God. And so I know that each one of us have our own unique method of contact. And so... You know, if there are any questions that you have around anything that I've stated this morning, I'd love to hear from you to try to help you become clearer on anything that I've said.
sort of interested, Christo, on how you do receive the messages. You know, for, you know, I'll just speak with you frankly about it. Uh, you know, I, I am pr in the, in the very beginning, my intuition opened, which, uh, at that point in time, 2007, I would just know things, incredibly detailed facts. And because of the, the little development that I had, I didn't know how I, how I was actually receiving the information. I didn't know what happened to me. So I would just know things. At that point in time, I had a couple of clear audience experiences as well that really just freaked me out for lack of a better word. You know, uh, you know, I went from actually hearing a voice speak to me, which was very startling. And so it happened a few times and I, <clears throat> I, I couldn't really handle that form of communication, so I, I shut it down. So these days, uh, primarily when I receive information, I see it in picture form. But then my restrictions around hearing beings speak to me has lessened, and so now I can have some clear, clear audience conversations with that other side, which makes it a little bit easier because if you imagine just communicating to somebody in symbols, you like pointing up or down or trying to, you know, communicating through hand gestures. It is limited. Uh, but again, you know, I, I, and it's interesting because I've met people who have had clairvoyant experiences, but then that really scares them because of the things that they've seen. So they end up shutting that down. But at this point, you know, I've had roughly 12 years of experience. And so when I meditate or close my eyes, that's when I'm usually looking into that other realm and I will see visual images of it. And then sometimes a, a being or spirit will come through and communicate additional information to me, which I'm much more open to receiving auditorily at this point. You know, it's kind of like information comes to us from so many different sources, even at a physical level, visually, auditorily, uh, different thought forms that we encounter or different opinions from people. And this is why I think it's really important to spend time in consistent, what I'm going to call orientation toward God. Do you remember those, those huge satellite dishes from our childhood? Oh, yeah. Do you remember those? Like yeah. you, you drive by sometimes, you still see them out in the yards of people. They're just huge. They have like a 15 to 20 foot diameter. Yeah. You know, I, I think of those all the time because it, in my childhood, you had to you had to basically turn the dial and turn the satellite dish to point to the satellite that you wanted, right? Right. And so I think that we have to continually dial into or turn toward God and continue to sit in that space until we have some sense of uh, confidence in that relationship. You know, because there is a lot of information and, in, you know, in the beginning, it took me a while to sift through what was mine and what was not mine. And, you know, when, like, when I hear things clear audiently, I still am not as confident as when I see things visually. So I may not trust the auditory information that I get as much as I trust the visual information that I get because I've had, you know, at least 10 years of solid looking where I can ask a person, you know, does, does what I'm seeing resonate with you? Okay, so I think it's really, and that, that's why I've titled this talk, Listening to God, because for me, it's a matter of continuing to build that relationship by continuing to sit in focused concentration on God and saying, essentially, reveal yourself to me, whether it's reveal yourself to me visually or auditorily or through knowing, and sitting with that knowing to see if it seems to be consistent with what you know about source or the infinite. Yeah, yeah but that's a, it's a great example. Yeah, I, I bet there have been other, there are other people here who've also yeah, had I'm clear, clear audience experiences. Yeah, anybody else have any clear audience experiences where you hear a voice speaking to you, or even the voice of God or an angel? I mean, I, I, I have a, I'm from a very small spiritual community at this point here, but there are a lot of people who say, oh yeah, you know, these, I hear beings speak to me. So again, I think that we, we must have some experiences along that lines here, or even just a knowing where you feel like God spoke to you 
through your consciousness and direct you to do something? Uh, the, uh, the first time I, I remember the audio, I had been bumped from the rear driving down the road at a stoplight. And I, I knew it was nothing intuitively. However, you gotta stop and do the thing. And as I got out of the car, I clearly heard but did not listen, do not stand between the cars. I like to look mm -hmm. down. So I immediately go and stand between the cars. I start to bend over and I feel something brush the back of my leg and I jump out. She hadn't set her car in park. Mm -hmm. It was out of her car and it was rolling <clears throat> into mine. Mm -hmm. I luckily was able to jump clear. And at that moment, I remembered hearing that as I got out of the car, but I wasn't paying attention. However, I, I find most of my, I don't think it's really audio. It's more, I forget all the terms. I, it, I hear it, but it's more of a thought. I don't know how to explain it. It's not the same yeah. as that was. Yeah, can, can I share with you? Please. You know, there, there's uh, what you're talking about is the, the difference between clear cognizance, where you just know something, okay. and then, <clears throat> or clear cognizance, <clears throat> where you know something, where a thought drops in, and then clear audience, where it's like you, you kind of like hear the voice or hear it, but people get them sometimes confused because they feel similar. similar. It's like the voice comes in and you hear it. And sometimes the thought drops in, it's almost as if you hear it. But, but you know, I look through your, I'm able to look through your energy field. And I do think that you spend a lot of time in prayer. Is that true? Yes. And prayer, oh, prayer opens the crown chakra, mm -hmm. which gives us the capacity to receive information clear cognizantly. So I would say that you are clear cognizant, but to me, your primary form of connection or you, the way that you primarily receive information from the world around you is actually through your solar plexus center. It, and that would make you an empath or you, that you know how other people feel. Would you agree with that? Yes. But, you know, here we're talking about our, our connection to God. And for you, that would be your crown chakra for sure. And that would mean that as you listen or as you pray, it would be, basically be, you know, inform my consciousness let me know how to proceed or uh, speak, you know, speak to me or communicate to me through my mind. Mm -hmm. And that would be a great prayer for, prayer for you because you're already built that way to receive information. Thank you. Yeah, but I love your story. <laughs> Don't stand between them. Not very spiritual, maybe. <laughs> no, you know, it, it reminds me when I was around 18 years old, I was just getting out of high school. And I was burning the candle at both ends. I was working. Uh, I was uh, dr building a drawing portfolio. And as I left for work that day, uh, it was a bright, sunny day. I'd stayed up the night before. And I, I would drive with my arm off the window. And I heard a voice say to me, pull your arm in. And, I, and I'm like, why do I need to pull my arm in? But I heard it again, pull your arm in. And I heard the voice another time really strongly say, pull your arm in. I pulled my arm in and I fell asleep. <gasps> and, and I crossed the center line and I hit a truck mm -hmm. on my left-hand side that basically tore the left-hand side of my car off, like, like the panels off. So if I had my arm out the window, it would have been torn off. See, you know, sometimes it's, it's not how God speaks to us or what he speaks to us about. It's that we're spoken to in a way that informs us of safety. You know, for, I sincerely believe that the voice of God spoke to you and said, don't stand between oh, the cars. I, I do too. <laughs> yeah. And I, don't, I can't think of really anything more spiritual than having your legs. <laughs> you know, it's good to walk around the world to be able to, uh, you know, walk over and turn on the, uh, the video camera. Indeed. Thank you. Linda, you yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, so I wanted to say, for the most part, I've, I've always had the, a knowing, but um, then I 
I developed I see colors like for people hmm. and now I've also um, now been getting some messages I very clearly heard a message from Mother Mary saying don't worry my child I'm with you <clears throat> And so I know that's not me saying that because I don't talk that way. <laughs> but um, that when I do Reiki, I see colors for people, usually referring to like a chakra that needs work or something like that. But those are my, mainly my experience with the Claire's. <laughs> I, I think that that's great. You know, I, I love, you know, for me, I love being able to see, you know, for me, that's a, it's a very important sense. But then, like you said, that the knowing, right, the, the knowing that comes through is so mm -hmm. clear that you've probably gotten used to it too, where now when that knowing comes through, it's like no one could tell you that you're wrong. Or that, <laughs> I've, I've been accused of that. <laughs> well, Yes. But you know, when you, when you get used to hearing it and you understand it, it's like you you recognize it as a form of truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Because I think it's important for all of us to to have this sort of dialogue and to understand and to accept where we are in terms of our own relationship with God and how we receive information. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Ken? Yeah, hi, Crystal. How are you? Hey, Ken. Um, yeah, I feel <clears throat> that this community is pretty tuned in around these kinds of issues. I am almost exclusively clairsentient. I feel. And I can feel vibrations. I can feel presences. Very, very rarely do I see but I have had a few moments that were exclusively clear audience. Um, the first time it happened many, many years ago. It was one of the most vivid. I was traveling, and I was really in a bad state. And a guy I was traveling with put his arm on my shoulder, and all of a sudden I could actually see Jesus through him, and I heard his voice say, this is your brother. Be mindful and take care of it, or be and be um, and listen to your brother. It was quite clearly a <clears throat> a statement. Not now when I connect with my guides. I think it's what you said before. There seems to be some kind of telepathic communication where the energy comes down and it's in thought forms, but they, there's a sensation, and the sensation translates itself into words. So if I'm writing, I will get impressions or feelings, but within the feelings will be words. So it'll be something like, um, what's happening now is because of such and such. Or, and so there's like downloads. But the downloads aren't like what you said about actual voices, but they are thoughts. And they do come to me as words, but initially it's like a stream of energy. And it seems to convert itself into actual impressions of thoughts and words that become tangible. And that's how I tend to operate. You know, I, I think that that is exactly true. And, and that's why I think that it's sometimes easy to, to confuse clear cognizance with the clear audience, because it seems almost like a telepathic communication where the words or the, the feelings get clothed in words. Now, I, I like what you said about having these periodic experiences or, or this a couple times, you know, I saw, like through this guy's field, I saw Jesus. I, I had this experience of seeing. And I think for all of us here that we, we will, we've had these different experiences where for a moment we get a glimpse into that other realm or we get a word or a thought communicated to us. And this is what I mean when I say, you know, listening to God, that we're just sitting in a space of receptivity to receive information along any of those lines. But what matters is that our, the, the satellite dish of our person is really focused on God. 
and that we're there in a receiving state to get that information that comes through. What I'm getting from you today, I'm getting an intuitive wave coming to me, that there's a major message coming through that's unspoken, which I'm getting, which is it's very, very important. It's a reminder because we forget, we get caught up and swept up in things. It's really important to spend as much time as possible reconnecting. And this is basic 101, but sometimes, so the minute you spoke today, and now I'm feeling it like a wave emanating coming through, is that it's just a reminder, and I'm feeling it all through me, that you got to really now spend a lot of time reconnecting and opening because things are just very severe. So thanks. I want to thank you for that. Yeah, you know, uh, thank you. Thank you, Ken. And I do think it's a really simple message. But, you know, even as much time as I spend looking at that other world, you know, I still forget to connect and listen. You know, there's there's listening on behalf of other people, and then there's listening on behalf of yourself and the world around us. And I think that even I need that reminder of remaining in close connection and being in that listening relationship with God. <clears throat> I'm on the West Coast, so I'm a little, uh, I'm a little sleepy. <laughs> um, but Claire Audient, I've had, I've had experiences of all of them, but Claire Audient in particular, I had a very interesting experience, whereas I was really being told not to do something, <laughs> like loud and screaming, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And I went and did it anyway. And after I did it, there was this silence, this cutoff that was unlike anything I ever experienced. It was just, there was dead silence. And I was like, I missed the, I'm like, where's the voice? You know, where am I, how come I can't hear? And it was like a TV was turned off. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, and I really noticed, and I was like, okay. And it was a bad idea. It was a really bad idea. Uh, and, you know, I learned, okay, the hard way. <laughs> okay, you really should listen to this. You know, you really should listen. And um, so I definitely have, and it was a little while before I could hear again. I mean, and I missed it. I really missed it. So I guess it's just the way I had to learn to listen. You know, I, I think that human beings, that we, we don't listen very well. No. And I think that all of us here would be in agreement that we've all heard that voice speak to us from within that we have ignored. I mean, I, when, when you're talking, I, I see all the times that I, have, I, I didn't listen and then experience the negative consequences of being out of that relationship. You know, it's, I think it's just part of being a human being and learning how to trust that, that sacred inner relationship or that connection to source. So I, I wouldn't beat yourself up about it too much. We're, you're just oh. learning how every, <laughs> go ahead. No, no, I'm not beating myself up about it. I was just like, the extreme of not hearing was shocking. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I, I mean, I was like, okay, you know, that's not hearing. And I didn't really like that at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, I think that you're even looking at you now, your ear chakras are actually considerably developed. Uh, it's, you know, to me, I look at people's energy fields at least three to five hours a day and your ear chakras are pretty highly developed. And, you know, that usually would mean that you would be able to receive information clear audiently. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, it's like uh, the, the guy who is known as the medical medium, Anthony uh -huh. uh, Williams. Uh, uh -huh. he, his ear chakra is pretty incredibly developed as well. But he hears most of the information, which is another, you know, it's just interesting, again, to see how different people have developed a different relationship to God or source to the, the infinite and are able to connect and bring through information. Hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Okay. Jill, you had your hand up. Yes. Hi. 
Um, when Thank I you. was 16 years old in 1969, um, I became a student of uh, one of my friend's parents who were trans channelers. And in working with them, it opened me up to psychic visions. And at the time, I emotionally could not handle it. I didn't want it. And I asked for it to be taken away to just leave me with um, intuition and inspiration, which has pretty much stayed with me all my life. I've done uh, metaphysical work and, and um, work on my personality and myself because I recognize that um, one of my patterns was to be a people pleaser and a codependent person and giving and helping to excess. And there was a part of me that was afraid of too much psychic power that would make me too responsible beyond reasonable boundaries. So I feel like I either have my foot on a hose or my hand on a spigot to eke how much information or communication I'm willing to receive because it feels almost fearful to me. And at the same time, I really appreciate all of the intuition and inspiration that I do get. And I've had many miracles throughout my life. So I'm happy to not have the visions and when I uh, did some training in uh, Holy Spirit communication with uh, the Doyles, um, I found that when I thought of the Holy Spirit as separate from me, it was sort of like a little bit out of whack that it feels better for me to know that the Holy Spirit is my right mind and it's me, not a separate being. So. I have different comfort levels with different aspects of this. You know, I think that that's really great to point out. And, <clears throat> you know, if you don't mind, I'm going to use you as an example. Because I, I hear this quite frequently, right? I had these visions. And this is what I mean by God communicating to us through a visual form or being able to see into that other realm. And... You know, like when I first started hearing, I shut, I shut that down. Like, I cannot receive information that way. It will drive me mad. And I've talked with other people who've had similar experiences where they enter into this uh, a contracted relationship of stepping on the hose or kinking the hose because to have that information come through in that particular intensity will somehow obliterate the self that the self won't exist in that space. And what's interesting is that I think that this might be the difference. You know, I don't, I don't claim to be a, a anything other than a, a pretty normal human being. So I don't put myself in the class of prophets or uh, people like that. But I think maybe that's what makes the difference between like you and me, where we're kinking the hose and people who have like the prophet or saint level status where they're, they're not standing there in resistance. Does that make sense? Yes. And so I think may, maybe there's some sort of lesson there as well for, for us here in this space who are kinking the hose a little bit uh, and trying to remain a little bit apart uh, to not be overwhelmed by all of this. Because it can actually be pretty over, overwhelming. You know, I, I love somebody's story about Mother Mary coming in a few years ago, I was in Lilydale, New York, and uh, I was teaching a class there. And as I was teaching, uh, we, 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 did, we went on a break, and so I was standing there, and there was a line of people that I saw. And then I saw Mother Mary come in. Mother Mary came in, and she stood there beside me, and she said, I want you to tell this person something for me. And I, I'm a reluctant communicator. So I looked at Mother Mary and I had this thought with her. I said, you want me to tell her that Mother Mary is here? I mean, like, I wouldn't believe that if somebody told me that. <clears throat> so I, I, I looked at this woman. I said, by the way, Mother Mary has come through to me and she wants me to deliver a message to you. And she, immediately this woman just looked at me and tears sort of welling up in her eyes. And I said, she wants me to tell you that she's sorry for all the things that have happened to you this past, this past year. And she started crying. She said, you don't know how badly I needed to hear that. You know, it, to me, it's incredible to have these visions, right? 
And I, I wish for you that you're able to come back into that space of unkinking the hose and being in that space of communion with God to receive those messages in this way. I would like you to be there again. Because I, I think that to what a place of uh, incredible power to transform people's lives from that space, right? Yeah. So, so sometimes I think of it this way, that when truth comes through, and for those of you who are doing like energy healing and you receive messages for people, but when truth comes through, as human beings, we, we usually do something to it. We usually water it down to make it more palpable. Do you know what I mean? When truth comes through and we water it down, it's like taking medicine and, and making it weaker, right? Where the medicine would work in its full and complete form. But if you, if you water it down or add something else to it, it's not as strong or as effective. Yeah, I know um, it's important for me to kind of release my personality and ego stuff when I'm communicating with a person and it's real clear when it works and the person is hearing what they need to hear and that I'm not invested in what they'll think of me. Well, I think it's amazing just to be a channel, Yeah. right? That you get to hear the voice of God or you know the voice of God and you communicate that knowing to this person who has showed up to receive. You know, I think of anybody who has made the sacrifice to be that person, that channel as an, an angel, you know, do you know what I mean? A person who's working on behalf of what we might call the hierarchy or working on behalf of uh, God or the infinite or a source to purify oneself sufficiently to be able to hear that voice, to speak it to another person. That's amazing to me. Years ago, I was driving my car out of a parking lot of some stores and the light had just turned green and I should have just gone but something just had me put my foot on the brake. And a second later, a truck barreled through the red light that would have hit me broadside. And I felt the energy just whoosh through me that my life was just saved by that act of stepping on the brake and not knowing why. So I've always had this sense that I'm being cared for and guided and helped in ways that I don't have to no details about it, if that makes sense. You know, I, I think this comes from th this idea that we're all connected to God, that we're all, you know, it depends on the book that you read, but we're all sparks of, of light hanging from this globe of uh, God consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so I, I look at this and that our souls are always in communion with God and that as we're going about our daily existence, our soul is speaking to us as much as it can through our consciousness, right? Step on the brake. Don't stand between the cars. Pull your arm in. And this is, again, what I mean, that if God is continually speaking to us in these various ways, even through visions, right, from, from these subtle internal knowings to these visions, to these actual voices, to the colors, what does it mean for us to actually sit and consciously connect and consciously receive, right? Isn't that a much different space? Yeah. Then pull your arm in, step on the brake. <laughs> yeah. But what, what more is available to us? And that's my question here. If we sit, what more can we receive of that relationship? What more can we know? What more can we convey? What more can we share? What more can we incarnate into the world around us. Thank you, um, Annette. Um, hi, Christo. Hi, um, Lee. I, um, I don't remember how many years ago I saw you. It's been quite some time, I believe. Um, and um, I, I, don't, I don't remember any of the specifics about that. But um, uh, there's a couple things that I wanted to say because um, uh, I, I want more of of kind of what I have and um, I, I know that there's things in my way, but um, I, I know things, I've always known things uh, and I, I, uh, I, I get, when I know things, you know, it becomes like, well, 
when is it appropriate to share that with someone and when isn't it? And I often will write, I'm also really highly observant. So I sort of dismiss my knowing into being, I pick up things that other people don't, mm -hmm. I don't think that they pick up and then that's how I know things. Um, so um, I don't, uh, you know, I don't always look at it as clairsentience, um, but I wonder if it really is and I'm being dismissive because I just know things. And then the other thing was that, um, and I do want more of that, but I, uh, and it's only happened a couple times in my life. Um, one really recently where right um, while I was sleeping, um, it was screamed in my ear, uh, you know, to warn, a warning of some sort for somebody else. And it woke me up, you know, like, I, I don't know what level of sleep I was in, but it woke me up and I thought, and it was very loud. It was a scream, you know, and um, I, it had a date attached to it. And so I looked, I went to look, I thought, oh, well, thank goodness that couldn't happen because it was like two days ago. And then I picked up my phone. I was like, oh no, it's today, you know? Um, and then I didn't know what to do with that information and it wasn't life or death. So it did, you know, but maybe it would have been helpful to share it, but I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know if it was fair for me to share that because, or ethical, you know, because it does impact yeah. somebody else. Um, and then the other experience was, um, I, and that was uh, last year also, I was in Brazil and I was um, in a sort of tribal ceremony um, with the Umbundu tribe, if that means anything. And um, I actually, and I was not fearful at all uh, there, but I, if this had happened back here in the States, I probably would have been really fearful. I had no fear there, so I was very open. And I had a spirit come in me um, and, and, um, and I was perfectly fine with it. And I was like, Oh, I could do more of that, but back, not in the United States. So I don't know why there it was okay. And here it wouldn't have been. Um, but, um, I, um, but I do want more and I, I ask for it, you know, but maybe I'm not listening and I know more about other people than I ever know or trust about what I hear about myself. So anything I get about me, I question, you know, I don't, I don't really trust it, but when it comes about somebody else, then I, I do trust it more um, because it's such a clear knowing versus when it comes to me. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of, you know, based upon what you're saying, and I do think this is true, that the way that people are tuned into their own intuition is is so automatic that they that they just think of it as a normal part of their thinking process. You know, every everybody gets information this way. But in reality, it's how you are tuned into your own intuition and connecting to other people. Okay, so not everybody gets information like you do. And again, I, I think that we can take this and, and not only turn it toward people, right? This is, this is I think, the, the great thing about our intuition and about these higher faculties is that you can look at a human being, you can look at an angel, you can look at a spirit, you can look at your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, the plants, animals, or you can also look at God. So you have like the full range of seeing and connecting and feeling, okay? With, with you, <clears throat> in terms of your general intuition, you know, the, the, the biggest problem that you face is this, it's a block through your solar plexus and your navel chakra where essentially you don't want to be seen as odd or strange. This is my, my belief, but what I'm seeing but it's enough to hold you back, okay? You know, and, and I think that you're, you're asking really good questions about, well, do I have to give information that I receive? And you know, there was a phase of my life where I was downloaded with information pretty much about everybody, even walking down the street. And so occasionally I would try to give somebody a piece of information and they were incredibly resistant and you know I, I don't think that it's not after having gone through that period of my life I don't think that it's a healthy thing to do to give people unsolicited information unless God is just knocking on your door saying you have to share or if it really feels right does that make sense 
if it feels right to give it. And I know most everybody here is probably familiar with the work of Carolyn Mace. You know, she tells a story about how this woman came up to her and said, you're going to be an amazing healer. This was just out of nowhere. So this woman is giving Carolyn Mace information about being an incredible healer. And Carolyn Mace thought this woman was crazy. And this woman basically approached her like two or three times saying the same thing. But if you, if you look at the situation, she was delivering a message to Carolyn Mace that was incredibly accurate, but also unwanted at the time. So I, you know, I don't know where the boundaries are. And I think that's another thing that you're, you're questioning, you know, where are the boundaries here? Uh, am I overstepping boundaries if I share information? And I think that it becomes situational. Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. And it's unfortunate that it ends up being sometimes no, but it's really dependent upon the person that you're addressing, whether or not they can actually receive the message that you have that you are channeling to them. Go ahead. So um, the, the thing that I woke up in the warning actually did happen. So I, you know, um, and again, it wasn't life or death, but, um, but the, what the piece that held me back is because I do believe in like sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. If you plant the seed at somebody's head, mm -hmm. it happened to me, you plant the seed, it's in somebody's head, you know, it's hard to make that seed go away. So however far into the future it might be, it can manifest, right? Because we, we do that. I so see. that's what a little bit of what got in my way. I was like, well, if it's not true, then, you know, what am I planting? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I, I think it's a good question. You know, sometimes, like I, I have conducted a lot of webinars and I've conducted a lot of online meetings and sometimes uh, an attendee will reach out to me afterward and say, by the way, as you were talking, God gave me a message to give to you. And, the, and they will say, you know, do you mind if I share it? I hope you don't think that it's too personal and or that I'm not that I'm overstepping boundaries. And, and what happens to me is that if there's a situation that's occurring, God looks around and says, oh my God, who can I deliver this message to? Who can receive it? You know, there's 50 people standing there. And so God drops the message to download into the consciousness of those that are there. And only one or two are able to actually receive it and become conscious of it. Right, like the woman, I, maybe there were 50 people in attendance, the woman who, who wrote to me afterward shared something incredibly important and also incredibly personal to me that there was no way that anybody in their right mind could have known about me. But she did because God spoke to her in that situation and what she shared to me was incredibly helpful. So it depends on, on who the receiver is, whether or not that personality is sufficiently open to receive the light into them that you're sharing. But you know, another part of this is just being able to receive information, right? That, that a lot of people here are able to receive information. They've received it periodically or episodically or sometimes more consistently. And so what this represents is that we're in communion. We're in connection with God. There's an active, uh, relationship that can be brought into fuller and fuller states of uh, activity and, and trust as well. You know, like uh, Linda, you know, I, I know from talking with her that her relationship with spirit is incredibly high. Her trust level of spirit is really high. And so because she spent time uh, navigating and cultivating that relationship, Okay, so for you, I think maybe it requires just more meditative space and more contact to build that space of trust. The, the meditation is really very simple. You know, however you begin your own meditative process, I, I want you to get into a meditative state. Take a couple deep breaths, relax, go to your quiet space. And as you sit there, I just want you to listen to my voice for a moment to help you understand the process. I, I use a form of meditation that I call introspective meditation where I just drop a question into your consciousness as you're meditating 
And this question is used to call up ideas and insights, self-awareness for personal growth and transformation. So as you're sitting here in your meditated, meditative space, the question that I want you to ask yourself is, where in my life am I not listening to God currently? Where in my life am I not listening to God currently? Now, usually this information comes through very quickly. In fact, usually in the first five seconds, people have answers or knowings or awarenesses. And if anybody would care to share what they received, if, it's, if they feel comfortable doing so, uh, I think it'd be important for us to hear and for the group to uh, receive that to help, under, help them understand the information that they got as well. like to share that I got a poke in my back <laughs> it was okay. like, like a finger poked me in my lower back now I have lower back issues and uh, many times and I'm wondering it's like well when my back's aching is that when I'm not listening I, you know it, it's interesting you know I see a lot of people with uh, lower back issues and is it above the sacrum like yes. three or four inches yeah so People, like, like if they look at your energy field, you, there's a chakra there at the back that sometimes can be active or inactive. In you, it's active. What this means is that you take family and tribe very seriously. Okay. And yours is bent, your chakra is bent, which means that likely you are relied upon too heavily. Would you agree with that? Yeah. yeah, you're right on target. <laughs> yeah, so getting, you know, getting, you're getting poked in the back by the pain regardless. The pain says, there's something wrong here. You know, when I look at it, I can see the chakra and I can see the distortions in it that say I'm kind of overwhelmed with maybe caring for other people or being overextended. Okay, thank you. Okay, you Thank you. <laughs> I have an answer that I got that had to do with um, when I'm not connected, I'm too focused on a relationship. So I'm looking with my eyes instead of just opening up to the wisdom that's there. And I'm just focused on that other person and how my judgments start popping in about them and what I think they need and how they relate to me. So my, I'm doing too much thinking and judging instead of, uh open I think that that's a great insight you know and I do think that that voice can obscure or just simply totally eradicate the other voice <laughs> you know and it's not about what we perceive or what we think we know but it's really about what we are able to channel what comes in that knowing is so incredibly crisp and clear and sharp that it's amazing there's no judgments in it there's no uh, accusations there's no misunderstandings yeah good thank you for sharing i'll go um is that uh for me i had it actually was the word um just work and then there were just flags that went up <laughs> so that was interesting okay um, yeah so that and, was, and how so it was interesting it was just one word yeah so it's my work. job but yeah but actually okay. the question is 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 it my job it was just for me to continue with is you know, I had the word and then it's like, okay, was it actually my job that I do nine to five or is there other things? But yeah, there was literally like flags. So that was a very interesting that it was very much came forward right away. Yeah, very fast. You know, sometimes when, when information comes through like that, that we're not clear on, right? Because you said, no, um, I wonder, I'll, I'll recommend going back into the space. So anybody who's not clear, let's jump back in for a second. So Julie, you stay with me for a second. Close your eyes and say, when the word work came up, 
what was it referring to specifically? <clears throat> it came back to what my nine to five job is, and then there was tension Perfect. in my heart. Great. And, and that's that was what a I great, saw too. great clarification. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. It's only $10. <laughs> How about two <laughs> high fives? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Okay, but you, you get it, right? So for all of you, you know, who are listening, if you if you didn't get clarity the first time or if there seems to be some sort of confusion, go back in and sit with it and say, you know, show me what this was intending. Uh, I used to do this with uh, symbols because in the early days I would just get symbols. And I'm like, okay, now you have to show me what the symbol means because I don't understand it in its current form. So it can create clarity where there isn't one. And so now that you have your answer, it's probably helpful, right? So you know that it's it's your job, your nine to five, where you're not listening to God. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes, yeah. So yeah, it is it is my nine to job, five job, which has its own flags to be, just to be aware of. So I think it was good to just uh, maybe, um, maybe as a second thought to understand and be curious, you know, when you're asking for clarity for that piece. Um, okay. Is um, to ask, you know, for me is I'm, I'm curious, is that like, okay, well, does that mean I should then ask what each flag is, <laughs> you know, what would yeah. your, be, be your recommendation is that when, when people are seeing things within that meditation, is it to say, Oh, what do I need to learn from a flag or tell me more about a flag? Well, how, what wording would right. you, uh, I think not that, that, that takes too much time in that. But no, no, no. I, I think it's a great question because I think that everybody else can also understand and benefit from it. You know, it's it is I think appropriate to say, what is this flag? You know, uh, if something comes up as being wrong or the symbol is wrong, well, what is it? What does it symbolize? And if there are multiple flags, then I would say, okay, show me. You know, A, show me B, show me C, show me D. And then you have a, a much clearer understanding of that whole space and work and flags and what it's really trying to, what your soul spirit is trying to indicate to you. Okay. Yeah. All right. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And we You're can welcome. ask for all the clarity that we, that we need, right? We can keep asking. So show me more, show me more, show me more. Yes. I think that is exactly true. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Christo. I really, really appreciate your coming and being willing to stay because we have even more questions for you now. So you're going to be here a while. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, know you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I think it's it's nice to have, you know, somebody to talk with about these things who spends a lot of time there. And, you know, I, I think it's also important to have community where these things can be discussed and shared. <laughs>